Hello class, Dr. Mac here. Just wanted to check in with week three. Um, this week we <clears throat> are spending some time talking about the power of uh, building coalitions and collaborating. I think right now um, this lesson could never be more important. Um, with the current crisis going on as far as the coronavirus, um, we've seen nonprofits lay people off. We've seen small businesses um, really struggling to figure out a way to stay alive. And so this is where the power of collaboration and coalitions comes in. Um, whether it be, you know, starting a coalition for small businesses to rebound post-corona, um, whether it's, um, you know, working with families that are trying to navigate not being evicted because they lost their jobs and couldn't afford to pay their rent. So really collaborating with different nonprofits or organizations to make uh, the power of their impact and outreach much stronger <clears throat> and using each other's gifts and experiences and expertise. Um, one example I wanted to share this week is um, I actually worked and wrote a grant for uh, a national homicide deterrent strategy out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the strategy was developed by a researcher from New York out of John Jay College. And it was a national model. And what the national model did was, uh, it was set on reducing gang and group homicides. So basically it targeted uh, gang and group members, uh, brought them into the federal courthouse um, you know, it was first, uh, you know, law enforcement was there and they talked about how they knew who they were and kind of like the stick approach, you know, we're not taking this lightly anymore. Um, you know, if we do catch you in gang and group activity, we're coming at you with federal time instead of some dinky, uh, county sentence. Um, and then social services stood up and said, Hey, if you want to change your life, we're here. We have these opportunities for you resources, education, employment, and then the community members stood up. People that have lost sons to gun violence, uh, people that have lost their sons to life sentences who committed acts of homicide. Um, and it was a way to reduce gang and group homicides. Uh, the organization that um, provided the social services, so resources to employment, education, um, were really good in those areas. However, how does one uh, locate an outreach to a gang group member? Gangs today um, don't necessarily wear colors like they did back in the uh, 70s to 80s, where, you know, you have the Bloods and the Crips and they were identified by colors. Gangs more are now territorial and divided by neighborhoods. And so it's hard to find uh, an outreach to gang members. <clears throat> and that was an expertise that the nonprofit didn't have. So what they did is they reached out specifically to another nonprofit that focused on outreach with uh, gang and group members and asked them to be a part of their grant. This allowed them to show more credibility. Hey, we're not good at this, but we're working with this nonprofit. They're gonna provide the outreach. We provide the resources, education, employment. Together, we can make a greater impact. And so that's just one example I wanted to share with you for this week that was my personal example. Um, collaboration is is uh, more sh more successful um, in achieving your impact, showing uh, more credibility as far as identifying funders. Um, when you come at them with a bunch of credible organizations that have done work already, um, they're more apt to fund uh, an organization <clears throat> or a cause. <clears throat> um, so that's just some examples I wanted to share with you. I hope that you are having some fun navigating um, funders and figuring out where exactly you can collaborate. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Have a good day.